Our current understanding of cerebrovascular disease is in large part due to the efforts and discoveries of Charles Miller Fisher. A graduate of the University of Toronto, Dr. Fisher was forced to spend three and a half years in a German prison camp during the Second World War, and yet learned the language in the process. I was in charge of a small prison hospital, but uh, there really wasn't uh, much medicine to it. So when I came back, I was about four or five years behind the, the rest of my group. I would say that the time in the prison camp taught me not to complain and uh, just get on with things. And when he came back and, and came to Montreal or to McGill, uh, he was soon no, known to be a man whose uh, diligent pursuit of what he wanted to find out was extraordinary. Part of the time was spent at the Montreal Neurological Institute where the great leader, Wilder Penfield, uh, was in charge. And uh, while I was there, he asked me if I'd ever thought of neurology, and he invited me to become the uh, acting registrar of the Institute. So that uh, all in uh, one day, I, I became a neurologist from having no thought of it the day before. In my uh, fourth year of, at, at, uh, the neuro at the Neurological Institute in Montreal, uh, the plan was to have me go abroad for a year. And uh, Dr. Roy Swank, uh, now in Portland, said that if I was going to take a year off with anybody in the world, there was only one person to go to, and that was to Raymond Adams in Boston. So I think he saw the Harvard, especially with Dr. Adams, as a very fertile ground with patients, uh, with a colleague and a mentor, uh, that he could really expand on this area and develop a methodology. Just one new thing after another cropped up. It was almost like firecrackers. Every day, every week, every month, something new, some observation that was cr contributory to the, to the welfare of patients. So the first one was that many patients who had strokes had problems in the carotid artery in the neck. One man describing one half the reason for the second commonest cause of death worldwide. Remarkable. From there, while studying carotid disease, uh, there came the, uh, the observation that many stroke cases had warning attacks, uh, transient ischemic attacks, TIAs, before their stroke. Uh, the third important discovery was really based on pathology, that sometimes if you saw a patient with an area of brain damage due to stroke and you looked at the blood vessel, the block was no longer there. It, it really moved. So the idea of embolus coming from the heart or coming from the carotid artery or other arteries was a very important discovery. It was the beginning of what's called stroke neurology. Uh, for the first time, doctors had to understand what was happening in stroke cases in order to bring treatment or devise treatment for, uh, for them. So that would, uh, in a sentence, would be the, the main thrust of my work. I know him as a man who, uh, who, who, who's been a man of purpose, kept his eye on the ball and concentrated on on uh, what he was doing and had a, an extraordinary work ethic. The people who have, uh, have been inducted are very remarkable uh, individuals. Uh, I think Dr. Fisher has always been proud of being a Canadian. I think it's a special honor uh, for him to be inducted.